This is Artu DTech, and today we're reviewing a very special phone, especially for the price point which we'll get onto, and that is the Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra. So stay tuned. Now in terms of design, this phone is your classic glass sandwich with glass on the front and back and also some really nice curved edges. Now the display has got a punch hole camera in the top left corner which we'll get onto later, but that of course is sort of the latest trend in design. Also it comes in three colours, either black, silver or my favourite which is a transparent edition which is actually quite rare nowadays. So in terms of design it's a pretty solid build and it's quite similar to other phones that we've seen like the OnePlus 8 Pro. The only thing that I will say is that the camera module on the back is absolutely enormous and it actually goes all the way down to the halfway point on the back. So that might be a bit annoying for some people and your fingers might smudge the cameras every so often but if you get a nice case with it then this shouldn't be a huge problem. Moving on to that display though, you get a pretty impressive 6.67 inch display which yes is pretty large but is kind of the current trend at the moment and that is an OLED panel which is great to see 120Hz refresh rate so scrolling through that software and doing some light gaming will be really nice and also is a 1080p resolution, which isn't the highest we've seen, but it's still pretty good. Now in terms of software, you do get Android 10 with the latest MIUI 12 skin on top. Of course, lots of people don't really like Xiaomi's skins, but I personally think this one is pretty nice, and they've clearly made an effort with things like transitions and wallpapers. For example, there is one wallpaper of the Earth, which is dynamic, and one thing that I like is that when you put the phone to sleep, it will zoom out into a full view of the earth and automatically put the phone into power saving mode, which I think is pretty cool. It is important to mention though that since this phone is made for the Chinese market, it won't really come with Google services pre-installed and you will have to jump through some hoops to get those working on this phone. In terms of specs, you're getting the latest and greatest Snapdragon 865 with this phone, which is great to see. And of course, that does mean that as a side benefit, it will also be 5G enabled if you want to use that. Now, this chipset is the best at the moment and it's really rapid, so you shouldn't have any trouble with performance on this phone. Now, in terms of storage and RAM, the base model is 128 gigabytes of storage with eight gigabytes of RAM, which I think is plenty, but if you want, you can go the next model up, which is 256 gigabytes of storage, and then you can choose between eight gigabytes of RAM or 12 gigabytes of RAM. In terms of future-proofing, you might want to go with the 12 gigabytes of RAM, but it's not entirely necessary. Now, if you really want to use this phone as a complete powerhouse, you can go for the highest storage option, which is 512 gigabytes of storage, and this will come with a whopping 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is absolutely insane, as it's the same amount of RAM that I currently have on my laptop. Now, one thing to mention is that this phone does not have expandable storage, so you should definitely choose the option which is right for you, out the box. Now onto the cameras which are absolutely insane on this phone. You're getting a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel main lens which is definitely really good. Of course that 48 megapixels doesn't mean that much anymore since software processing is kind of more important at the moment but the images that come out of this phone have been rated very highly so definitely take that into account. The next lens you get is a periscope telephoto lens and it goes up to five times optical zoom which is really good and it also goes up to an amazing 120 times hybrid or in other words digital zoom which is kind of a gimmick but it's pretty impressive and it even beats the S20 Ultra which I think is absolutely insane. Now the next lens you get is a two times telephoto optical lens which again is pretty good. I'm not sure why they have this second telephoto. I think it's something to do with taking some portrait mode shots, so it's great to see anyway. And the last lens that you get is a 20 megapixel ultra wide lens, which I think is probably one of the most useful lenses you can get, even more useful than the telephoto, apart from the main lens, which of course is the most important. So it's really nice that they've included that as well. Now on the front, you're getting a 20 megapixel wide lens in the form of a punch hole camera, and this is in the top left corner. I personally prefer it in the center like on the new Galaxy phones, 
but I guess that's completely up to personal preference and it's not that big a deal anyway. Moving on though, video is where the main camera really shines because it can do up to 8K at 24 frames per second, which is just like of course, that means that it can also do 4K 60 frames per second, which you'll probably use more often, but quite impressively, it can also do 1080p all the way up to 960 frames per second, which means you can capture some really high resolution slow-mo video as well. The only disappointment is the selfie camera's video, which is capped at 1080p 30 frames per second. I think this is quite disappointing, but I'll pass on it since not many people film video with the selfie camera anyway. Now, one thing which I really like, which is more of a software implementation, is that you can actually film with two of the cameras at once. And I think that's amazing for things like interviews or vlogs, so you can capture video in front of you and the selfie video at the same time, which I think is pretty cool. In terms of battery, you get a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, which isn't the largest we've seen, but it's still really respectable and I think will definitely get you through a full day of charge. Now, charging is where the phone really shines. You can charge up to 120 watts, which is just, I don't even know what to say, it's just ridiculous. Like, what? <laughs> this should get you to 100% battery in just 23 minutes, which is by far the fastest charging I've ever seen on any smartphone. And that's not even the craziest part. The craziest part is that they give you the 120 watt charging brick in the box which I've never seen on a smartphone, and I definitely think companies like Apple should take a page out of this book. Now, in terms of wireless charging, you also get a ridiculous high wattage wireless charging. It can wirelessly charge up to 50 watts. Of course, they don't give you the wireless charger in the box, but just being able to wirelessly charge at this pace is also really impressive. The phone also has that reverse wireless charging feature. So if you put like your wireless earbuds on the back, it can charge them up to 10 watts as well, which is a nice feature, but is a bit of a gimmick. Now IO or input output isn't really where this phone shines. You don't get expandable storage or a headphone jack. The expandable storage thing I'm a bit disappointed about, but the headphone jack, I think that boat sailed a long time ago, to be honest. Oh, oh is that so? You do get stereo speakers though, which is quite nice to see, and you also get a dual SIM slot, which I guess if you're in certain professions can be quite useful. In terms of a couple of extra things, you do get an under display fingerprint sensor, which is optical, so it won't be the most secure. But another thing which I really like is, obviously this is sold separately, but you can buy a wireless charger, which actually has like a motorized unit inside, so it can track the wireless charging coil on your phone and make sure that they're perfectly aligned. Now this will make sure that your phone charges at the maximum possible speed when you pop it onto this wireless charger. I think that's pretty cool. Yes, it's a bit of a gimmick and it can be a bit noisy when it's tracking the coil, but if you wanna buy that, then it's a pretty nice thing to have. In the box, you obviously get the phone, but you also get a headphone jack adapter since there's no headphone jack. You also get a nice transparent case but it has got a bit of a texture to it, which is nice to see. You also get the charging cable as expected, but again, the most impressive part is that 120 watt charging brick, and you could easily charge any laptop with this as well, so it's pretty cool to have. The last thing to talk about is, of course, price, and if you live in China, this will be a very attractive buy, especially compared to other products like the Samsung Note 20 Ultra. In China, the equivalent dollar price would be around $760, which is almost half the price of the new Note 20 Ultra, and yet this phone has basically all the features, if not more. The only slight problem with this phone is the autofocus on the video. It's not that good, and also we know that Samsung corrected this on their phones. So definitely in terms of autofocus, the Samsung phones are now better, especially with that new laser autofocus. But they might be improving this with software updates, so I don't think it's the end of the world. If you don't live in China though, it will be a bit more expensive because you will have to pay import fees on top of the phone's price. That's because the phone is only being sold by Xiaomi in China. So if you do want to get it in the US or the UK or any other country, you will have to import it using a website like AliExpress. So if you buy the phone on AliExpress, it will be more like $999 for the base model, which yes, is quite expensive, quite a bit more expensive than it is in China, 
but compared to other phones like the Galaxy Ultra or the Note 20 Ultra, it's actually quite a lot cheaper and the feature set is even better in my opinion. To wrap things up though, this phone offers a really large feature set for the price. Obviously it's really expensive, no one's just going to whip out a thousand dollars from their pocket, but compared to other companies like Samsung, this phone offers the same amount if not more features and for a much lower price. The only thing that does annoy me is that autofocus, mainly because I like to film a lot of things with my phone camera, but if that's not you, then the other features on this phone are really great for the price point. Anyway, that's it for this week. If you did like the video, then please leave a thumbs up. I think that helps with the algorithm somehow. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, then maybe hit the subscribe button and notification bell below. Thanks.